Hi everyone, so this is Lilac Sprinkles for Tutorials and today I'll be teaching you how to make this alpaca ice cream. So let's get started with how you make the waffle mould. So first you want to take some scrap clay and just flatten this down, I'm just using a glass block. And then what you want to do is take a blunt end of a blade or any kind of indenting tool and just make horizontal and vertical lines and try to get them as consistent as possible. Then when you've done that you want to bake the mould and I'm using a silicone mould maker, you just mix the two parts and then you get a silicone mould that you just press the clay mould into to make it easy to make the waffle mould. Or you can just use the clay one if you want. So now I'm taking some vanilla clay and pushing this onto the waffle mould, you do need to have it quite thin. Then I'm cutting off the edges to make it into a kind of wide pizza shape, so basically like a V shape and then cut off the top as well. Then just roll this up into an ice cream shape cone form and you can use a pencil to help, I didn't do that in this video, and then I'm cutting off the end and then that's the basic shape for your ice cream cone. Now I'm going to be shading it with some chalk pastels to make it look a bit more realistic. I'm just using a kind of golden brown, a brown and then a slightly darker golden brown and I'm focusing the shading on the very top of the cone, the point and where the join of the waffle cone is. You can really do it however you want and then bake this for half the usual baking time of your clay. Now we're going to take some pink clay and push this on top of the half baked ice cream cone. It's very important that you have baked the cone and then it should look like this. Then I'm just taking some tin foil to texture the ice cream to make it look more realistic. Then I'm taking a needle tool and pushing down the edges all around the ice cream cone to make it look like it's been scooped. And then I'm just adding some indents to the top of the ice cream to add a more realistic look, I guess. Then it should look like this. Then I'm taking two pieces of pink clay and making them into triangle shapes for the alpaca's ears. And then I'm just placing these on top of the ice cream. Then it should look like this. Then I'm taking some white clay and kind of flattening it slightly and putting this on the front of the alpaca just so I know where the nose will go. We'll take, we're taking this off in a second though. Then take two more pieces of white clay and then flatten these down and these are going to be for the eye areas. I don't really know what it is but you'll see in a minute. And then just place these on the alpaca's face according to where you made the indent for the nose. And then you can put the muzzle thing back on top. Then I'm just making two small indents where the eyes will go and then taking two pieces of black clay and pushing them where those indents were. And then you can use a dotting tool or anything to just push them down slightly. Then I'm rolling out a snake of black clay and these are going to be for the eyelashes and I'm just cutting off two pieces and then putting these next to where the eyes are. This is a bit fiddly but you should get there in the end. Then you want to roll out some more black clay and cut off three pieces and you can't really see what I'm doing, I'm really sorry about this but basically the top one is like a U shape and then it has two smaller pieces coming off the bottom of the U shape like a cat kind of and then you can put in the eye pin and then you can bake this again for half your usual baking time so that the clay won't burn as we have already baked the ice cream cone. Then when it's out of the oven it should look like this and what I'm doing is taking some red chalk pastels and just adding blush to the cheek so it looks a bit cuter and just yeah and then then I'm taking some scribbles well it's not scribbles but it's 3D paint and just using this for ice cream. If you want you can use TLS before you bake it, I just found this easier. So then when you're done it should look something like this, you just want to wait for that to dry and then your charm is finished.